I'm going to go ahead and for this part, I am going to copy and paste a little bit. Um, only because we're going to use a couple, we're going to use quite a few system dot dot print lines, and there isn't really a point to just type all of these out, right? So let's just go ahead. Um, I think we're going to need probably like six more. So let's see, two, three, four, five, six maybe. All right, we're going to go ahead and change this, and it's going to say, "What would you like to do?" All right, the first choice is actually going to say um, one, we're gonna say view balance. We're gonna say two, oh, we're gonna say two, and we will say deposit. We'll say three, let's get that going. We'll say three is withdraw. And lastly, we will say four is goal progress. All right, perfect. And then the last um, option or the last prompt is going to be the quit option, right? For zero. Okay. Um, so we're good to go there. Now we're going to go ahead and say below our bottom asterisk, uh, we're going to go ahead and use another while loop and it's going to have the same idea as the while loop um, from earlier, where we're going to make sure that the user input going forward is the correct input for whatever the operation that we're doing at that time. So in this case, we need a number. So we want to make sure the user is entering a number. All right, so we're going to say, and I'm actually going to copy this, and I'm going to paste it, and I'm going to say, please enter, please input a valid response. All right, and we're going to put a period here as well, and then we're going to do scanner.next to prompt them to re-enter if they do enter an incorrect response. And then we're going to say beneath, if they do enter a correct response, we're going to say user dot or user input equals scanner dot next. So this gets the input from the user for which choice they want to do um, from this prompt. Okay. Um, the next thing we're going to go ahead and do, we're going to create a switch statement, and this should be the last piece of code that we use for our um, project. Uh, let's go ahead and just remove all of this. I really don't like how they use all this boil boilerplate code. I don't feel like it's necessary. Um, okay, so went ahead and created our switch statement. So we're going to say user input is going to be the um, value we're going to be operating on. And then the case, the first case is going to be one. The number one so if the user enters one we're going to do something let's go ahead and remove that as well okay so if the user enters one we're going to say system dial use sys out and we're going to say um we're going to say uh, do, 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 do. we'll just say balance and then we will do plus balance or plus so we got access our balance using our piggy bank method because it is in a separate class although the main method is in the class piggy bank in order to access very in order to access methods in the piggy bank class we do have to access them through our object all right so we're going to say piggy bank dot get balance and then we are good there all right so if the user enters one they want to see their balance we're going to say balance and then we're going to get their balance. All right. And then we're going to go ahead and break there. All right. And let's see. So the next thing we want to do is create another case. Let's go ahead and fix that. We're going to say case two will be how would you like to um, deposit or how much would you like to deposit? All right. So this out 
let's just say how much would you like to deposit question mark all right perfect um the next thing we're going to do with that case so we want to again use a while statement and i'm going to go ahead and allow uh, if you would like i don't recommend it if you're still in the very early learning stages but if you're not definitely you can copy and paste just to save some time um let me see so we're actually going to copy and paste this while statement and we're going to paste it here all right so we just need to run our check again to make sure they enter a valid response and if they don't we need them to re-enter it okay um let me see right quick so all right perfect so let's go ahead and break that all right awesome and then let's see so the next thing we want to do is a third case third case i'm not the best typer <laughs> all right so case three now with case two we do have a couple other things we need to do really just one other thing um so case two they clicked on deposit they want to deposit some money all right we say okay how much would you like to deposit we get their response and we save it to this user response and then we need to deposit the money right so we're actually going to take the piggy bank object to access our method and we're going to say deposit right and then we're going to use user input so we're going to deposit however much they said they want to deposit using that object and then we're good there um case three we're going to do a similar thing except we're going to do withdraw so we're actually just going to copy case two because they are identical we're going to say how much would you like to withdraw and then we're going to go ahead and change deposit to withdraw. User input. Oh, let's see. All right, perfect. Wow. Okay, perfect. So the last uh, where are we? Two. the last case we're going to do uh, case four we're going to go ahead and say so this is going to be if they are looking to get their percentage how much they are or how much you are um, saved to your goal so the percent that you are to your goal uh, this is going to require just three print statements um we're actually going to do not a print line on the first one it's just going to be a, a print statement because we don't want to print it on a different line we want it to run on the same line as the second print statement so with this one we're going to say you are and then we're going to space and then we're going to come down and we're going to do a system dot out dot print f statement and we're going to say we're going to say percent and then comma dot to F. So that formats this number that we're going to get here, this value we pass through. It's going to format that into a um, number that has two decimal places. So tr two trailing decimals places. All right. So my typing is redonkulous. All right, perfect, so percent to goal, okay? And then the last statement, again, is going to be a sys out. And on this one, we're just gonna say percent to goal. Percent to your goal, rather. Goal. All right, perfect. Um, okay, so the issue we ran into, uh, we were short one break, curly brace um, closing on our program. I knew it was a curly brace issue. I just lost track of where that issue was. Uh, that happens. Um, fortunately, you can usually just click on the curly brace and it will tell you the corresponding curly brace. Uh, so sometimes you do have to go through and just kind of, you know, 
click on a bunch of them and figure out where you are. All right, so we should be good to go just about. Um, the formatting is a little bit off. I will format the code here in just a moment. Um, just going to close some of this white space. All right, perfect. So the last thing we need to do, we have two lines of code left. Uh, we need to do a sys out. And here, so if the user presses zero, we need to pretty much give them some kind of um, message, essentially, that, hey, thank you for banking with us, or some kind of outro or some kind of a goodbye message. All right, so we're going to say thanks for banking with piggy bank. And then piggy bank. And then we can say oink, oink, or something like that. I don't know. <laughs> All right, perfect. Um, okay, sounds good. So the last thing we need to do is just close our scanner. And then we are good to go. Close. I don't know why I said system. I, I said scanner, but I typed system. That's how it goes. <laughs> All right, perfect. So our project should be good to go. Um, it looks like we may have an error somewhere. Let me see. So we should probably have an error. Um, oh, no, we don't have an error. All right, so I just needed to run the program and we should be good. So let's test it out. Um, we're gonna just run through each one of these different prompts and make sure they all work. Um, so the first of which we're going to say three, or rather we're going to say, so welcome. What is your savings goal? We're going to say 500. All right, perfect. So your goal has been set to 500. That works perfectly. Uh, we're going to then say, uh, so what would you like to do? Let's view our balance and make sure. Oh, we have $0. Correct. We don't have any money. We haven't deposited anything. All right, cool. So we need money. Let's deposit. All right, so we're going to click two. And it's going to ask, how much would you like to deposit? Well, you know what? I'm feeling kind of fancy. Let's go with 1500 All right, perfect. 1500 successfully deposited. Well, I want to make sure. Let me make sure that money went to my account. So let's view the balance. Boom, $1,500. All right, perfect. So, hmm, I think I need to withdraw some money. I need to go get some gas. And we live in a world where gas is expensive. So let's say gas is $300. All right, cool. So we clicked $300. And did that run correctly? You know what? It did do what it was supposed to do. Um, what I would like is just for it to print out just like here where we say successfully deposited uh, we're actually going to say that same thing so we're actually just going to copy this method the system dot that print line here in the deposit and let's just copy it over to the withdrawal we can go ahead and remove money deposit and let's just say withdraw amount and then we'll just say successfully withdrawn all right um, so let's just run that right quick uh, and make sure it did work. And I am Texan, if you can't tell. I always get the, why are you saying right quick? That is not a, yes it is. That's what we say out here. <laughs> All right, perfect. So um, let's go ahead and run it one more time. We'll say 500. Uh, we will go ahead and deposit 1,500. We're going to go ahead and withdraw uh, we'll just say 300 successfully withdrawn. Perfect. And then let's go ahead and uh, check the balance. So we should have 1,200, and we do. Uh, the last thing we want to do is just go ahead. Um, I'm going to show you the issue I was talking about earlier with the percentages. So if we click 4, you'll notice we are 42% to the goal, which uh, should not be correct. Um, that should actually be because, uh, go to my balance. So I, I believe these two may need to be flipped. Uh, nonetheless, I'm not going to do that in this video. Um, we pretty much got what we needed to get. Uh, that is a mathematical issue that can really just be fixed in a matter of moments, but 
I am 45, 46 minutes into this video, so I do need to go ahead and wrap it up. Um, so that is going to do it. Your project should be working almost flawlessly. Um, the challenge for you would actually be to go through and make it flawlessly. If it is not working flawlessly, which it should not be, if you um, copied and pasted directly from the code in our tutorial. Um, so yeah, go in, you know, make it more fancy, add some fluff, uh, make it work perfectly. And I would love to see in the comment section, you know, how you guys were able to make your projects work better or more efficiently for you. Uh, that would be great. Um, but in the meantime, that's going to do it for this video. Uh, I do appreciate you guys tuning in with me and I look forward to seeing you on the next video. I don't know what it's going to be just yet. I'm thinking it's probably going to be a game this time around. Um, and again, it's going to be console based, so it's not going to be anything crazy. We're not going to be using any kind of uh, special methods or anything like that. Um, so, but yeah, it's something simple like, I don't know, blackjack or something like that, that we can do in the console. So yeah, thanks for tuning in with me and you guys have a great, 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 great night. <laughs>